How's everybody doing today? Time for another video. I said I was going to try to do a couple of weeks. Uh, I think last week I did one, my wife did one. Um, try to do more, but it depends upon my mood, you know. Uh, I'm very serious about everything. That's just how I am. I've been like that my whole life. And, uh, you know, I look at a lot of stuff on YouTube. I look at a lot of stuff on Facebook. It's just so much silliness nowadays. Like everybody wants to laugh. And I enjoy laughter. We did a video about a couple weeks ago about laughter and how it's, a, it's like a medicine. It's a good cure-all. But, you know, all this practical joking and just playing around and acting silly. I mean, to me, Jesus is almost about ready to come back and people still acting. You know, acting silly and crazy. You know, it's time to get serious as far as I'm concerned. The end's about here, you know. People laughing and all giddy and trippy, and you know, and life's kicking me behind, you know. To me, you know, it's just, I can't, I don't understand it, but I mean, you know, people are people, you do what you want to do. But I remember uh, in the Bible where um, when Noah was building the ark and the people were all laughing at him and, you know, thinking he was a fool and, you know, and he was serious trying to tell the people what's about to happen. So, you know, as they all drowned, and I'm sure they were yelling out, please help us, help us. You know, him and his family were safe because they were serious. They weren't just tripping and acting a fool. So, you know, to me it's just time to be, to be more about learning and trying to grow. And, you know, especially as us black people, you know, the step and fetching days is over. It's time to get serious, you know. Stop scratching where it don't itch and, you know, just tripping, you know. So I'm doing a few less videos than I wanted to because it's, to me, just seems like people really just want to be entertained. They don't really want to learn anything. They don't want to apply it to their lives and try to grow. But I was talking uh, last week about uh, how my wife and I and our family stand on the Word of God and for our protection. We don't worry about who's in office, who's not in office, whether the Republicans and Democrats. We're getting ready to do another election, you know, and it really doesn't matter whether Republicans or Democrats win, really, because it's all a big game anyway. Satan's game, and they're coming against you, and I don't care whether you're Republican, Independent, uh, Democrat, or whatever you are. If you don't understand God, stand on God's word for his divine protection, then, you know, you're going to go down in the end anyway. So, uh, you know, it's time to get serious. But I was talking about standing on God's word and God's word of protection, but you can't be protected by God's word if you don't know God's word. You know, a famous Bible uh, instructor and teacher said that you can't have faith for that which you don't know anything about. So you can't have faith in God's word if you don't know God's word. So you got to first study God's word and know God's word, and know what he said, what his promises are, what he said he would do for you, you know, or else you're not going to know that you have that type of protection. So I thank God that we do know we have protection and we know how to stand on the word of God. Does it mean that nothing can ever happen to us? No, I'm not saying that. But uh, we don't worry about it, you know. And even if the enemy comes at us in a negative way, God always turns it around. You know? and the Bible says that he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. The Bible also says that he will make that which Satan uh, wants to be be evil in your life, he'll turn it around and make it for your good, you know. And I know I've, there's been times in my life when people have been a blessing to me that didn't even really like me. And I'm sure you've had the same situation in your lives where, you know, people are blessing you and they may not even care for you. But that's God, you know. So God will protect you, but you got to learn to stand on his word. And in our my blog, the last couple of blogs I did was about God's protection and how to stand on God's word. And you can't stand on God's word if you don't know God's word, like I said. And in order to know God's word, you got to have a personal relationship with God. you got to know him like a friend. You know, you got to know what he said he would do for you. And then you, like, hold him to it. You know, you said in your word this, you know. So then God can see, well, yeah, he knows the word. He, he knows what I promised him, and he's expecting me to come through and come through for you. That's just how it works. So I was talking about the different scriptures that we stand on. This is about 13 scriptures. We stand on the whole word of God, as much of it as we know. But uh, uh, I was talking in particular about a couple of scriptures in the blog. So uh, I'm going to go through all the scriptures in the blog. The blog is Truth 24-7 Gospel. Truth 
24-7 gospel.com and uh, that's the uh, gospel blog and we have truth 24-7 health.com you know where we talk about health issues because we're into health you know we believe that we should have a healthy body so God can use us to be a blessing not a feeble body you know and if you are sick you need to find out how to be well and going to the doctor is not going to be the key to getting well because you know not all doctors are your are in, are in favor of you. you know, not all doctors uh, have your best interests at heart, and, uh, and a lot of the medicines, of course, don't because of all the side effects. So we talk about health, and we talk about the good news of the gospel. But we're about being serious about the things of God. And you can be serious and still have a good time, but you need to be serious because this this thing is like I said is coming to an end. But with God's word and standing on God's word. You need to know enough of God's word to have faith in God that he will, he will do what he says he will do. And it's based on his track record with you. You know, if you look back over your life and, you know, whether you have a real close relationship or whether you just go to church every Sunday and call yourself religious, I'm sure there's been times in your life where God has delivered you and he's come through for you. So, you know, when you're facing the next problem in your life, think about his track record, what he's done for you before. And he'll do it again. And so my wife and I, we stand on everything that he's done to this point, And we know that he's going to do it again for us. And that's the faith and the confidence we have in his word that he's going to come through for us. And uh, like I said, we've had problems. You know, and everybody has different little issues and things. But, you know, they only get magnified if you focus on them. If you don't focus on them, then you don't magnify. So we try not to focus on them. We think about the good things, the good times, and you know, and you look around and uh, whatever little issue you may have had, it's it's resolved. It's gone. It's not there no more because you know you chose not to focus on it. And you just think about the goodness of God and what He He can do for you. And what you find as you get more into the things of God, study of God's Word, is that God's Word builds upon itself. You know. Like one scripture and an understanding of that scripture uh, is really based on you understanding aspects of that scripture from what you've learned before. It's almost like mathematics. What makes mathematics difficult for a lot of people is it builds on itself. You know, if you never understood addition and subtraction, you're not going to understand multiplication and division. You know, because like I said, it builds on itself. And if you don't understand that two and two is four you know, or three and three is six, then it's going you're gonna have a hard time with trigonom trigonometry and, uh, you know, calculus and some of the other things later on because it builds on itself. That's the same thing with the things of God and God's word. You know, you just stand on the few scriptures you know and eventually you'll know more and you'll know more. And uh, after a while, you get a very good understanding of what's going on in the world, what's going on in your life, and how God can deliver you from the situations and circumstances. And a lot of our problems are because we've gotten ourselves in the situation by making the wrong moves and making the wrong choices. You know, every day we have choices that we can make. You know, I made a choice to marry my wife. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. You know, but you know, other people have made the choice to marry somebody and it turned out to be the wrong decision. But my decision was based on God's word. I prayed for her. You know, I prayed for uh, the right mate. God gave me the right mate. Okay? So I was blessed by that. I made some other decisions that weren't so good, you know, in business. Not trying to do anything stupid, but, you know, just not really investigating properly. You know, but, you know, it's all good. You learn. You still learn from it and you go on. But uh, everything's about choices. You know, whether to eat this or eat that, that's a choice. Whether to go out or not go out, that's a choice whether to make this investment or that investment. It's a choice. Some choices are minor, some choices are more major. You know, as far as what to wear at a particular day, that, you know, that's a minor choice, really. But you're driving down the street and uh, you can make a right turn or a left turn. That could be a major uh, choice because you could go to the left and wind up being in an accident when God told you to go to the right. You know? So the more we are in tune to God and his word, he can direct us and give us direction in life. We can make less and less mistakes in, the, in our lives. But still, when you do make a mistake and you mess up, just stand on God's word. You know, he's already forgiven us. But 
You have to forgive yourself sometimes and then get into the Word, study, and find out why you made that mistake so you won't make that same mistake again and then go on with your life. Anyway, uh, we also have a, uh, a blog, not a blog, actually a post where you can buy uh, gospel items online, Truth24, Truth, excuse me, dash ambassadors. Dot my Shopify dot com. You can buy uh, Christian items. But the two blogs and also the the, uh, the site where you can go buy items. And then occasionally we come on and try to do it two or three times a week at least. Uh, post here on YouTube and then also on Facebook. So, you know, we're about learning and about bettering our lives and helping others to better theirs. Um, but everybody still, you have a choice. Hopefully we make the right choices as opposed to the wrong choices. But be blessed, develop a relationship with God, and do that through his word. And remember, you need a relationship as opposed to religion. Because religion is not going to get you over a relationship will. So be blessed. Thanks for tuning in. And check out the blog. Find out more information on how to stand on God's word for God's protection. Because if you don't need it today, you will need it tomorrow. Because there are things happening in this country that we really need to be protected from as a people. Be blessed. See you later.